What's up guys, it's Ryan from Tower Reviews and today I'm going to be doing a video comparison of the iPod Touch 1st generation on the right and the iPod Touch 5th generation on the left. So I'm going to start out the video by going over the hardware differences on both. So obviously it's been about 5 years in between, you would expect a large jump in hardware and also software. So that is definitely the case as you can see by the relatively simple design of the iPod Touch. It had the chrome backing, which I changed myself into this matte finish by using, by basically just sanding it down. Uh, you got the iPod logo, which still remains relatively unchanged there. Well, you have the Wi-Fi antenna on the left of the iPod Touch, sort of in the corner. You have it on the right of the iPod Touch 5th generation. Um, absent on the iPod Touch 1st generation is the camera, which you can see right here that we've got the camera here on the iPod Touch 5th generation. We also have the LED flash, which obviously without a camera would be pretty much pointless on the iPod Touch 1st generation. And down here in the bottom left hand corner you have the uh, loop button there, so that's obviously absent. That's the first generation of iPod Touch to get this. From a dimension standpoint, both are relatively the same thickness. The iPod Touch, is, the iPod Touch first generation is a little bit thicker. It's definitely a lot heavier as well. And then the length and width, and or the length and height are different as well as the iPod Touch first generation has a 3.5 inch screen. The iPod Touch fifth generation has the new 4 inch Retina display that was just announced a couple months or one month back. Other than that, the back is uh, it looks pretty similar. You can definitely tell that they're from the same company. Uh, some of the design cues haven't changed all that much. Now, when we get on to the front of the devices. Again, camera is absent here on the iPod Touch first generation. Um, a very simple device here, not much to offer, and yet it still costs $100 more for 16 gigabytes of storage, which is 16 gigabytes less than the iPod Touch fifth generation. I also want to mention that on the sides of the devices, we have nothing on the right side of each of the devices, but on the left side of the fifth gen, it's kind of hard to see because it's the same color, but there you can see that it has two volume rockers up and down, they're separate buttons and here as the iPod Touch first generation does not have external speakers it has no volume rocker and you can see there on the bottom that you have the 30 pin dock connector, the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and no speaker grill you have the lightning connector which is also a new feature of the iPods in this generation 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and five holes for the speaker. So now we're gonna go into the software which is also very different because all the old iPod touches except for the fourth generation do not even get the newest software. Let's make sure that the brightness is the same for now just so you can get a accurate reading on the difference in the display quality. Obviously you have the retina display on the iPod touch fifth generation and you just have that old Apple display 480 by 320 pixel resolution which is 163 pixels per inch and then over here on the iPod Touch 5th generation, we have the pixel density of 326 pixel, pixels per inch at 1136 by 640 resolution. So there obviously is a large difference. Um, if anyone has ever seen the difference between the iPhone 3GS and iPhone 4, it's about that. Uh, the colors are a little bit richer on the iPod Touch 5th generation compared to the old Retina display. But other than that, the resolution is the same. You can't distinguish the pixels. So we got the brightness about the same. Uh, you can probably, you probably can't see much of a difference on camera, but in real life, it's a world of difference. I mean, even the app colors there aren't even truly white if you compare it to these here. You can see that the iPod Touch first generation is running 3.1.3, which is the latest software it can run. And the iPod Touch fifth generation is running 6.0 and that is the newest software Let's out. go for a power down test and see how long they take to power down and up. Okay, so the iPod Touch 5th gen is down, the 1st gen is down. Not much of a difference there. Now let's go for the power up. Also the lock button has switched sides. Uh, it used to be on the left side with the 1st gen and now it is on the right side with the 5th gen. Alright, so there we go. We got them powering up, and let's see how long that takes. 
You can also tell here just how much richer the blacks are on the white iPod Touch, or the uh, iPod Touch 5th generation. You can see like a bluish tint to the 1st generation. Alright, so the iPod Touch 5th generation is up. So you could already be in here doing all the things that you would do with your iPod Touch while you're still waiting for your first gen to go. So there we go. Not that far behind, but still a very significant amount of time. Let's now open some apps and load up some web pages. We're going to make sure that the multitasking is cleared out over here on the iPod Touch 5th generation. And that's not even a problem on the 1st gen because it doesn't have that capability. As you can see, if you double tap the home button, it opens up the music. So I guess we'll start out by opening up the music. Alright, so actually they were relatively close. Okay, so now let's load up the App Store. Okay, so the iPod Touch first generation cannot connect to the store. I'm not sure if... I haven't used this iPod in a while, so I'm not sure if that's because of the software version, that it doesn't even allow it to access the App Store anymore. Because I am connected to my Wi-Fi, so I'm not sure about that. I'm hoping everything else still works. Okay, so let's clear history. Clear cookies, clear cache and data, or cookies and data, and clear cache. Alright, so let's first start out by going to youtube.com slash tower reviews. Alright, one, two, three. So the fifth gen is done. And the first gen is done. So let's uh, load up one of these videos here, which happens to be the iPod Touch fifth gen unboxing. Alright, so now they're both loading, and obviously you can't hear what's going on on the first gen because it has no speakers. Let's turn it sideways and see how that looks. Alright, so as you can see here, you have the black bars at the top and bottom of the first gen, and you don't have any here because it's the 16 by 9 aspect ratio, so widescreen video works perfectly. So that's another thing to consider. Alright, so let's go home on both of them. So that's another issue that you might find having with the iPod Touch 5th generation, that a lot of apps aren't optimized yet. I'll give you an example real quick. Um, I don't think Angry Birds is optimized yet. So as you can see, there's the letterboxing on both sides. You're not going to have that problem with the first gen, but you're going to have thousands of other problems, so that's not really a reason to get the first gen. I don't really think anyone's considering. They just want to see the difference. Go. Okay, so the fifth gen is about done. All right, the fifth gen's done. Still going. And it's still going. Okay, so let's cancel that because it's taking way too long to finish it up. Uh, let's just scroll around the page and see how that is. 
much choppier here on the first gen. It's unresponsive. Never a problem over here on the fifth gen. Uh, you notice that this, the reading or the text looks a little bit cr or a lot crisper here on the f uh, fifth gen, but it also looks a little bit yellower, which really, if you're not looking at them together, you wouldn't even notice. But there's definitely a yellowish tint to it. But I personally think it it kind of makes it easier to read. It looks more like actual text. One, two, three. Okay, so there goes the grass on the 5th gen. Fifth gen running the A5 processor, of course, and the iPod Touch first generation. Um, doesn't really have a name of its processor, so that just shows you how bad it is. And the grass is rolling out. Still going. Still going. It seems to have a problem finishing up. Come on, buddy, you can do it. Alright, it's finally done. Just overall, the whole experience on the iPod Touch first generation is very unresponsive. Uh, the screen takes a second to actually respond to what you're pressing a lot of the time. It's still usable as a music player, but I wouldn't really want to do much more with that. Like You can just see how long it took to close that app. So, all in all, you can see how far Apple has really come in their iPod Touch lineup. Uh, just from a hardware standpoint, how the software works with that hardware, really, they really have come a long way.